I'm David Alexander. I'm co-founder and CTO at Wildcard. First, I would like to thank the whole OE team for letting me speak today. From our self-built authentication service to OE, I introduced to you an authentication service journey by one explaining our use case to you. Two, by going over our history. Three, why we chose Ori. For the future user experience, we tend to do thanks to the stack we integrate with Ori. And finally, how we are integrating the Ori application into our product. At the end of the presentation, again, we will be a an opportunity to uh, for you to uh, to ask questions. Uh, during the early stages of software development, the standard methodology used by the engineer was the waterfall method. This method requires the engineer to get approval first, then build, then before deploying. Uh, then test before finally deploying. And while this method helped with accuracy, its major shortcoming was that it took up so much time for different teams to get through each of their tasks before the next team move on. Deployment process were slow and the market was terrible. Many customers in this situation are forced to deal with the inconvenient of DevOps having to build their pipeline, meaning they must learn to configure and maintain the new CICD stack themselves. At Wildcard, we are the ambitious to create the CICD 2.0. We have by offering a non-code tool platform where everyone can create their pipelines and deliver their cloud native apps in easy way. When we are logged in, we can see the pipelines currently running and the pipeline that have already been run. For each pipeline, we can see the log, obviously, and we can restart the pipeline and see all tasks it has. We, when we got, when we go to the CI/CD type, we can build and, conf and configure in the pipeline by selecting and configuring the tasks that are currently available. This is the first task where we use the token because we need to clone the, the source code for trying to guess the language and the packages by others to give the customer, the user, a better experience. One using wildcard, the developer can create their pipeline. But in order to run this pipeline, we still need to get the source code and when we, during the configuration, even if we did it before, we have to remove each time the source order because it doesn't out. To get their pipeline, the, the token, sorry, we use all association. For our minimal viable product on the left, we created our own authentication system because we have decided to use GitLab Runner to run the customer's jobs. The choice was guided by the fact that we were in using GitLab and we know the, how to configure and build pipeline with it. There is not, there aren't not out-of-the-box systems that met our specific needs with GitLab integration. After the user has signed, all authentication systems get 
the user token for their identity provider. And all along, multiplied exchange between the microservice, we use that token too for to put the webhook into the project to grant um, access to our customer dedicated GitLab instance to clone the project after receiving these events for the provider from the provider before pushing it into the GitLab. In order to to trigger the pipeline to run the job and also, we need the token for checking user permission on the project and weaving um, our, our product. Once our MVP has been validated for the version one of our product on the right, we remove the GitLab instance by using token CD. It's a, net, a Kubernetes native um, product uh, that should really well our infrastructure. We will see that later. We use it for building the customer's pipelines. There is no need to create a user or a project as we used to with GitLab instances. And no more alteration to code too, because with GitLab instance, we have to add the pipeline within the source code and push it in the GitHub instances. Tecton only needs a pipeline, the token, sorry, for cloning without altering the code. There are no more need to duplicate, so, so that means there's no more need to duplicate the code source to another repository. Despite this, because we keep our own authentication system, we still need to check the of the user permission every time. It has become obvious to us that we need to review and enhance our architecture by first replacing our authentication system. So we start to look for a tool that can deal with the authentication and simultaneously our authorization. We quickly left out for our version one. Only two tools of our selection remain, Keyclock and OI. So we visit our, our, our text, sorry, well tied. Both offer authentication and authorization systems. Due to our backend begin developed by Golan, such providing easier integration, we decided to keep OI. Begin in the container world, we do not really like the idea to get another Java tool. By using OI, we tend to achieve this architecture. As you can see, there are less internal core. All code will go through Kratos for the authentication and Keto for the authorization. Going throughout this new architecture and these tools bring many opportunities to us and our customers. With Kratos, we'll be able to create the provider management feature. These features will allow customers to log in and add project for providers that differ from the one they used for the first login. And last but not least, we will add the organization and team management feature. This feature will be added by incorporating Keto. The user will be able to create organization and team. They can manage all members access either into organization and or into teams themselves. 
our applications are running in several Kubernetes clusters. Let us see how we do it in these clusters. Here is an example on how it worked before. An external traffic goes through a reverse proxy called ingress to reach the right application. Each application checks the GWT token with the authorization system. Even between application calls, a check is done against the authentication system. In addition, each application has its own permission checking. Let's just get started on our Kratos proof of concept. Keep in mind that we work in Kubernetes. For those who do not know, Kubernetes is a container manager and consider that each container is an environment that runs only one application. Firstly, we roll out a quick Kratos uh, quick start. Hopefully, I will provide an easy way to put it into Kubernetes. We can draw the architecture like this. In the second line, we have the ingress. In the third line, we have a resource called services. The services resource is an abstract way to internally expose the set of containers. And let us remember, a container is a smaller isolated environment where the application is running. So our POC is ready. Ori Kratos is an API first identity and user management system. We test all flow offering by this API to understand how they all work. We tested only the user password authentication method is configured. Once we validate the all out configuration and all flow, we can go further by configuring the, our OEDC providers. To do so, we need to create an application into each provider. When that is done, we have all we need to do go, to go further. So we can continue our work, and then we conduct all the tests on all the flow with the provider method. The result of this let us lead us sorry to an issue. How to get the token of our of the user for our use case? As we said, as I've said sorry earlier, we need the token for cloning the project in order to execute the pipeline. At the moment of the test, there is no way to get this token because Kratos not record it. So the question is what to do. Hopefully we can develop in the same language as Kratos, Golan. And the ORI community plan to do it in their roadmap. Hence, it has been obvious to us to contribute on the project. We have delivered some commits in order to create this feature. At this point, we have all we need to start the integration to our product. And thanks to the ingress, yeah, it works with the final implementation of crisis looks like in our infrastructure. But for a seamless implementation, we had to develop a layer to smoothly inject Kratos into our microservice. In this way, all calls, internal and external, come through Kratos to reach the application 
and there is no longer any need to deal with the token validity inside the application. Our Kratos la uh, layer accomplishes four steps on each request. It checks that the Oracle Kratos session is present in the HTTP, either in the cookie or in gRPC metadata. We use gRPC call between microservices. According to this, where the call is from. If not present, it returns an authorization message, an unauthorization message, sorry. With this cookie, it gets the user session from Katos API. Then again, if something goes wrong, a different unauthorization message is sent. Then we repeat the same behavior to get the identity of the user. Finally, we record the session and the identity on into the context. This context is then distributed into the application along with the request, because sometimes we need to check the token in order to put in for um, for the uh, the pipeline or whatever. Now that authentication journey is done, we have to start the authorization journey. Then our next move begins to reach this architecture. As all calls to the authorization service are internal, there is no need to expose it to the internet. In the same manner that we did for Kratos, we will build a Keto layer responsible for all incoming permission. The Keto layer will receive the request from Kratos layer and it will get the identity and the original request to check the permission. If the user is granting the request along with the contest will be sent to the application for the execution. Otherwise, the request will be stopped and the layer will respond to a specific authorization message. And by doing, by doing this, sorry, we will respect the target we have chosen. Thank you for listening.